Hello everybody and welcome to another Python tutorial video on sockets. So up to this point we've talked about how we can use sockets to attempt to make connections, uh, but we haven't really talked too much about sending and receiving data on both ends. So what I'd like to cover in this video is going to be um, both making a client, uh, coding in the acceptance of uh, receiving data as well as sending data from a client. So one of the easier things that we can do here, or more uh, sane things that we can do, um, is to create some sort of client where we can make a connection, um, type some stuff into that you know connection that we've made via Telnet. So we can type in some data from the client, send that data to the server, which will receive that data, digest that data, and then maybe you know send out some sort of response um, back to the client. So in our case, we're just going to make it really simple, but you can envision uh, more advanced things that you could do with the data once you received it. Um, the other thing that we want to do is we want to, if it's a server, the server needs to be able to accept requests, right, and connections and all of this. It needs to be able to accept data and send back data um, specifically to the connection um, in question. So there might be 15 people browsing a website, but you see exactly what you're doing. You don't, like click on it, you know, go to a website and then start being moved around because of what other people are doing, normally anyway. Um, no, you do your own thing on that website. You view your, whatever pages you wanted to click. And so the same thing here, if you're going to create some sort of a server, so to speak, you're going to want to serve each connection specifically. Um, the only um, thing that comes to mind right away that is not the case there is like if you're creating some sort of like chat room where everything someone types uh, is viewable to everyone else, you know, something like that. But anyway, uh, moving right along, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, with the code that we have so far, we're actually going to leave everything that we've made. Uh, the only thing I will change uh, for now is we're just going to comment out this connection address part and then the connection information that we print out. <clears throat> and now we're ready to actually start handling this stuff. And I, even though it might sound very deep and confusing, it's actually going to be pretty basic. Uh, and we'll be able to cover all of this within this, this single video. So first we're going to want to do define, um, so you've got a server and a client, right? So we're going to define the uh, client, or we're going to define threaded underscore client. And uh, the parameter for threaded underscore client will be connection, C-O-N-N. And uh, we'll do um, connection dot send and again uh, to stress the difference of Python 2 and 3 Python 3 makes the distinction between like byte strings and strings uh, whereas Python 2 does not so if you're if you're doing this tutorial in Python 2 you would not need to do encoding and decoding you would just do the natural thing but Python 3 makes the distinction and, and rightfully so um, so we have to do encoding and decoding so basically everything we send out we're gonna need to encode everything we receive we're gonna need to decode but even on messages that you receive, you have to decode them, do whatever you want, and then encode and send them back. So when we do con.send, we're going to need to do send str for string dot encode. And then we're just going to say a message like welcome, uh, type your info. Okay. And that's just going to send an info, uh, you know, kind of like an informal greeting to the person. Also, it won't naturally make a new line. So we're going to naturally make a new line with backslash n. Or at least it may not. At some it, it probably will. Anyway, moving on. Um, now we want to make a loop that will basically continue sending the information. So if you remember before, as soon as we made our connection, boom, connection dropped. So actually we want to go ahead and, and keep that thread alive um, uh, instead of dropping as soon as we get a connection. So we're going to go ahead and say while wow, true for to make our little infinite loop here. And then data equals con.recv and then at what buffer rate, basically 2048, okay? So that's the data. And then we're gonna say our reply, so data is anything that we receive. A reply is gonna be equal to, um, and actually we'll just make the reply uh, something basic like server output colon, and then um, plus data dot decode, um, and you want to decode it to TF8. So again, all the data that we received, 
we have to decode, and then the reply is server output plus data.decode uh, and UTF-8. Then um, what we're going to do is if not data break, so we can actually stop this connection, and then we're going to do connect con dot send all string dot encode reply. So here's a perfect example where we've accepted data, we've had to decode it, we've made our changes, and then we've done um, an encode to to send it back. So con dot send all encode the reply. And then once uh, this while true loop is completed, while you know we're not have with the connection is not there anymore. We're going to go ahead and do con dot close, and that's basically it for a threaded client. We don't have to really do anything else there. So now what I want to go ahead and do is again we'll come down here and we'll just say while true, and we'll take the same stuff that we had before here. So we'll just tab this over, uncomment it. So now we're printing the connection, and then um, we're going to start this uh, thread, basically. Um, so we're going to use, uh, well, we haven't imported it, have we? So we're going to come back, we're going to come up to the top, and we're going to go from underscore uh, thread, actually lowercase thread, import everything, and then we'll come all the way down here, and now we'll import, or we're going to do... Um, start new thread. So start underscore new underscore thread. And then we're going to start a thread with the threaded client. Okay, so we'll copy that, paste. And then even though there's only one parameter here, by just absolute default, it must be a tuple. So that's just the way it is. Don't ask questions. And it's going to be con, comma, nothing. Okay, you just don't put anything there. It requires a tuple, so we make a tuple. Just you just have to please the Python gods here, um, and that's it. Okay, so now what we're doing is each time someone makes a connection, it's going to pass them through threaded client. It's going to give them their own thread entirely. It's fancy stuff. Now um, we'll go ahead and run this and just see if we had any errors. Uh, so save and run. I don't see it popping up yet. Well, are you? There we are. Okay, so I think that we've started. Um, we probably should put something here like, I don't know, print waiting for a connection or something. I don't know, just something so, so we know that we're at a point where we wanna be, but we'll leave it up for now. And now I'm gonna bring over lovely Raspberry Pi. And Raspberry Pi is going to connect for us. Now, I've already forgotten what port we are on. I think it's 5555, right? Yes. Okay, so Raspberry Pi is going to use Telnet. Again, if you don't have Telnet on Linux, you would need to do, you know, sudo apt get install Telnet. Yay! But I already have it, so I don't need to do that. So we're going to do Telnet. And then now you need to use your, your IP. Now I'm going to be using my local IP. So 192.168.2, and I believe it's 8 from 28. Interesting. Anyway, um, oh, that makes sense, I suppose, because we, we're in SSH, so anyway. Um, port 5555. Five, five, five. Uh, we'll hit enter, and we are connected. Here is our server that's running at the moment, and it indeed says, hey, you've been, you're connected to uh, 192.168.216. So we have a valid connection currently, and now we could say something like, I don't know, hello, enter. And then we see that uh, the server received our hello. It was able to decode our hello, our fancy dancy hello, and it adds server output hello right back to us. So that's cool. Okay, so yeah, obviously this is very basic. Um, this output that we're receiving is it's just saying it's just server output plus whatever we sent in. But you can imagine, uh, think you might be doing something with this data. Um, you could also be sending instructions, uh, the thread, you know client you know decodes your instructions it does the things it needs to do and it sends back some information and the server says yeah you did a good job here's some more instructions and so on so that's generally what we're going to be using this the sort of thing for um, but here you go you've got uh, good server and client communication happening right before your eyes so anyways um, I think that covers the basics of sockets pretty darn well um, so that's going to be the final video in these 
at least basics to sockets. We might come back and really re-hit sockets just as we've kind of rehashed over threading, shown some more examples um, and all that. If anybody has any specific uh, aspect of sockets that they'd really like to see, uh, feel free to make a suggestion and chances are I'll make a video on it. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments on this topic, please feel free to leave them below. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.